ऑनलाइन होगा मैम एंड वेन यू पीपल आर रिटर्निंग बैक टू दैंपस नो इन्फॉर्मेशन मैम नो इन्फॉर्मेशन मैम बट वी वॉन्ट टू कम फ्रॉम फर्स्ट डॉगमा सो यू नो that the dna to rna is known as transcription and rna to protein formation is known as translation yeah in your cell biology class you might have studied that basically there are three types of rna so rnas are many but when it is considered for your level of teaching we are learning three types of rna okay the first one is the messenger rna or shortly known as mrna it is actually carries the information from the dna to the nucleus to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm so basically as the name suggests messenger it is carrying the messages okay it's carrying the information from the dna to the proteins kind of thing and ribosomal rna shortly known as rrna they are actually present in the ribosomes and they combines with the protein to forms the ribosomes now the third one is the transfer rna or also known as trna they transfer the amino acids to the ribosomes to help forming the proteins so basically the name suggests they are transferring this amino acids from the uh, to the ribosomes so that they can help forming the proteins right so this is a cartoon form so, so that you can just make it, uh, it it becomes easy to learn messenger as the carrier they are running so something messages like time of trna something like this and are about some protein factory so Uh, DNA to RNA, the transcription takes place with the help of the enzyme known as RNA polymerase. Remember, in DNA replication, the enzyme involved was DNA polymerase. Here, the enzyme is RNA polymerase. Okay. So the question had come in CA2 also about DNA polymerase. So here we are working on the enzyme RNA polymerase, which is actually forming the RNA from the DNA. so you can see this is a dna dna double helix strand the orange one 5 days to 3 days prime and 3 days to 5 days prime what is actually happening is that similar way the dna as like the newly strand dna forms in the 5 days to 3 days direction here also the rna forms in the 5 days to 3 days direction with the help of rna polymerase so what it does is that it brings new nucleotides and based on the base pairing it adds up the nucleotides and it forms the rna newly synthesized rna so newly synthesized rna is shown in the blue color so basically in transcription the machine uh, machinery actually involves three parts so the transcription unit which is actually present in the dna has three regions the first one is the promoter region where actually the rna synthesis starts so it is like the start site start region then the structural gene which is actually getting copied uh, getting as used as a template to form the rna at the end at the end we have a terminator where the transcription stops the stop site so basically start site gene and the stop site promoter the structural gene site and the terminator okay this way it starts from this place and ends up goes going and ends in terminator end region remember the direction it is taking place in the 5 days to 3 days prime direction so it is taking which strand the dna strand that is oriented in 3 days to 5 days prime okay what you keep below one below one so there are many other factors like sigma factor everything are there but for your teaching purpose we are not going to that detail part simply remember promoter structural gene and terminator so the rna polymer sits over here and it goes in the direction 5 days to 3 days prime direction it keeps on adding nucleotides based on the chargraff's rule a pairs with 
U. Remember U because in RNA we have uracil instead of thiamine. So A, U and then G and C. Our base pairing takes place and the finally RNA is formed which is now formed like this. Key. Clear? Class, any doubts? Similar as DNA replication, simply that here we are having RNA polymerase and second thing is we have a machinery, promoter, structural gene and terminator and third important thing, we have uracil instead of thiamine because we are forming a RNA instead of a DNA. Clear class? Okay. So again, with the same picture here was shown over here, promoter region, then the star site and same thing. Those promoters are the regions in DNA sequence where the transcription begins. Okay. And promoters and terminators, terminators have specific nucleotide sequences that are actually recognized by the RNA polymerase enzyme. So this RNA polymerase will actually identify which are the regions where the transcription will start and where the transcription will end. Clear? Now coming to the organization of uh, genes in different organisms like prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So prokaryotes, as you know, are the simplest organisms. So they do not have this uh, complexity. So they have simply coding region kind of thing. But in case of eukaryotes, the genome organization is something different as like they have some uh, interrupted nucleoside sequences. Like you can see this red region are the coding region and this type of region, the red regions will actually code for the uh, RNA while as the orange region won't code. So non-coding regions. The coding regions are known as the exons and non-coding regions are known as the introns. Okay. So, so eukaryotes have some different machinery for the uh, RNA transcription. What actually happens here? Some mechanism is mechanism known as splicing takes place where this introns region, non-coding region are chunked out. They are cut with different enzymes and these coding regions are actually joined together. And finally, those coding regions are then used as a template to form the RNA. So as you see here, exons, 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 transcriptions then alternative slicing takes place and all. So we are not going to details about that. Simply remember the organization in prokaryotes and eukaryotes are different. And so as well, so slicing of the uh, um, alternate uh, non-coding regions or the entrance are chunked out. Only the coding regions remains from which the RNA is formed. Again, the same picture we're showing here, eukaryotes, the complexity and prokaryotes simply DNA to RNA and then protein. Wherever here we are having some transcription, then again the unknown coding are being removed and we have a RNA, that RNA is transported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm where protein synthesis takes place. But since we do not have any nucleus or something in prokaryotes, it's very, very simple. In eukaryotes, it's a little bit complex. So that's because the RNA that has been formed from the nucleus is actually transported from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm, in the ribosomal machinery, the protein synthesis takes place. You must have learned in the cell biology that the ribosomes are the protein factory where the protein synthesis takes place. Right? Yeah, as I told, mature RNA, once the RNA is formed, it is actually exported out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm for the protein synthesis. See, once the RNA DNA to the RNA is formed, the RNA is next comes out of the nucleus, nucleus to the cytoplasm the orange place this is shown and this RNA now sits within the ribosome and it forms the this blue chains amino acids joined together to form the protein molecule. Those who have some confusion about transcribe and translation because it gets confusion for confusion for some people so transcribe means rewrite a message so some may same same message with some minor changes because DNA message is the same as the mRNA except one nucleotide instead of T it is U so that's why it is transcription and translation means you are just like changing you are translating one language to another like German to Spanish or something so this mRNA is now changed to they are used, using the information from the mRNA we are actually translating that entire information to another thing that is known as the protein. So that's why this machinery is known as translation. Clear? Now moving to translation, what is the protein synthesis? Just a second class.
Okay, uh, there were some issues. Uh, so that slides are visible to all of you. Are my slides None visible? Ma yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not yet. Is visible now? Class? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, so, it's coming. It's coming. So one thing in transcription that you need to remember is that the strand that is actually forming using as a template for RNA synthesis is known as template strand. The class memory. I'll call back. So the template that is actually forming the uh, so the strand that is forming the using kept as a template for the RNA synthesis is known as the template strand. OK, so which is the template strand now? The one that is written from the 3 dash prime to the 5 dash prime, isn't it? Class. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So yes, see, this is something uh, important to remember because it happened in uh, my previous to previous batches. So people got confused and did mistakes. So I'm telling you again. So though the strand that is actually used as a template for RNA synthesis is known as template strand. Simply used for template, template strand. But it is very strange that the other strand that is actually not coding for anything is known as the coding strand or the non-template. So remember the non-template strand is known as the coding strand. Are you getting my point? For example, uh, if I give you this thing. Let me start here. Ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, when you were uh, showing the presentation that uh, that time, uh, the screen was showing like blank. I think you have shared a window. That's why it is uh, doing. OK, ma'am, now it is visible. OK. Now is also the slides is not visible. No, no, no. Now, now it is visible. OK, ma'am. Continue. Okay. So yeah, can you just see which is the template strand? Because RNA is formed from the 5 days to 3 days prime brand. So this strand, the 3 days prime to 5 days will be the template strand. And this other strand, the 5 dash to 3 dash prime, will be the coding or the non template strand. Clear to all of you? Yes. Ma yes yeah. Ma now, yes, ma'am. In, in if your exam, I will give you this coding strand only and I ask you to write the RNA. So, can you tell me what will be the RNA right now? What will the RNA that will be formed? UACG, UA. CG, UA, CG, like UA. UA, CG will be formed. Seriously? Mm, yes, ma'am. Class, all of you? I mean, place of T, URSL will be uh, there. Yes. So basically, if you look into this, so RNA is actually forming this base front strand with this template strand. So A with uh, we will pair with U and T with A and G with C and C with G. So whatever it will really form, it is exactly the same as the coding strand, except that instead of T, we have U. Clear? Class clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma but, but here, yes, ma here, if you do not give the polarity region 5 days to 3 days prime, then you are getting 0. OK, simply as someone said right now, U, A, C, G, U, A, C, G, U, A, C, G, Hoga. So if you write like this, then I will give you a anda, zero. OK, so you have to give the polarity 5 days to 3 days prime. OK, so the RNA that will be formed, which will be exactly the same as the coding strand, except in place of T, it will be U. So it is a tricky question. Do not get confused. I might ask you the template strand. I might ask you the coding strand. Do not get confused which is the template strand, which is the coding strand or non-template strand. Clear to all of you? Uh, use of then coding strand here. Yeah. Use of the coding strand, nothing. 
it is not getting used. The template strand is being used to form the RNA. Hmm. So why coding strand is generated? Then? That is that is the tricky part. No, that you ask those people, molecular biologists people, why they have written that name. Go to the Leninger book, you will find out why they have written. But uh, why written, written, not written, but it has been mentioned very clearly. How is which is the template strand, which is the coding strand. Okay, all of you are clear with this thing. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Let's move to the other machinery that is the protein synthesis. Protein synthesis actually is known as translation. In prokaryotes, it actually happens in the cytoplasm. In eukaryotes, it happens in the cytoplasm and also on the rough endocleum, endocleum reticulum. Okay. So, uh, in eukaryotes, the RNA is transcribed in nucleus. The RNA then moves from the nucleus to the cytoplasm through the nuclear pores. You can see here. Once the transcription happens, the RNA swarm, it moves from the nuclear pores into the cytoplasm. Then the ribosomal subunits and pre-RNA actually on the ribosomes and this polypeptide chain or the protein synthesis takes place on the ribosomes. So how it takes place, we'll discuss right now. Now see, DNA is just a string of nucleotide pairs. Okay, now very important is this question that comes to the here exists that if it, DNA is simply a series of nucleotides, how does this series of nucleotides actually dictate the sequence of amino acids and protein? Okay, DNA to RNA, very easy. Transcription, as I said, simply you are writing, you are transcribing from the notebook to your, from the slides you are writing in the notebook, whatever it is written in the slides, you are writing in the notebook, very easy. But when it goes for a translation, when we are translating one language to another, let's say German to Spanish or like Hindi to English also, you are having some important, like you have to find out what is actually the machinery is about. So there are just four nucleotide bases in DNA and we have 20 amino acids in proteins. So genetic code, do, do you think it will be language like Chinese where each written symbol corresponding to a word? Then how do you think it will happen? I mean, how many nucleotides will actually correspond to an amino acid? Are you getting my point? There are four nucleotides in DNA and so in RNA. Now RNA has just four and we have to go for 20 amino acid. We have to go for 20 amino acids are there to build the protein. So translation, how do you think it will be happening? If we go for permutations and combinations, so if I take one letter nucleotide, just one letter codes for one amino acid, then how many amino acid will be coding? Just four, but we have 20. If one, one nucleotide corresponds to one amino acid, then only just four amino acid will be formed. Are you getting my point class? So ma'am, then one nucleotide is coding for I think five amino acids. How it can happen? One nucleotide will cover for five. Um, then only five for the 20 is something like that. Anyone else? Ma'am, we have codons, like a group of three, um, three bases. Oh, why? What is actually happening? If one is one to one, agar kare, to mara four ho raha hai. If I take two also, then how much amino acid will be covered? If they, they take two amino acids, uh, two nucleotides, let's say AT will go for one, TA will go for one, second one, AU will go for one, UA will go for one. Similarly, if you go like this permutation combination, how many amino acids will be now covered? If you simply go four, to the power two, I mean, if you look like that way, then 16 amino acids will be covered. Still, we are not getting that 20 cases. Still, four amino acids are left. 16 amino acids will be coded, and see, since we have 20, so four more will be left. So what do you think? What can be the possible combination then? So that is why- Three nucleotides. Okay. That is why we are going for three. If we go for three nucleotide, then what will be the possible combinations? If you go for three, similar just four to the power 16 amino acids are there. Four to the power three will give you 64 amino acids. Now, 
more is better right less is harmful so 16 won't cover the 20 64 at least is covering the 20 more are there is fine but at least we have the all the 20 amenities are being covered so that is why this nucleotides are arranged in three triplets okay three ways so triplets and these are known as the codons so triplets of nucleotide bases are actually the smallest smallest unit of uniform length that can code for the all the amino acids so in this arrangement of three nucleotide each one specific specifies for an amino acid so there will be at least 4 to the power 3 means 64 possible code words and there that is more than enough to specify all the amino acids okay since we have 20 64 is more than enough now experiments actually have verified the flow of information from the gene to the protein is based on a triplet code okay so this all are experimentally verified it is not something i am saying out of something like that everything is experimentally proved so this genetic instructions for a poly polypeptide chain are actually written in the dna as a series of non overlapping three nucleotide words so here you can see yeah can you show the previous slide for one yes yeah, sure no problem this one No, ma'am. The uh, previous two is one. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Now look at it here. You can understand in what matter way. So in so I have this code, and so all the possible arrangements have been shown. The sixty-four cases. So I have A U G C because since we are going for RNA, so I am keeping U, not T. So A U G C can be. Paired in different ways in forming the 64 combinations. Okay, so these all have been experimentally proved. It is not like that you have to remember all, but few things you have to remember. Like I will tell what I have to remember. So like this is a codon G C A G C C G C G G C O. These four are actually coding for the amino acid alanine, which is represented as the first low one letter code as A. Similarly. A G A A G G C G A C G C C G G C G U actually code for the amino acid R G nine and so on. So for you, you have to remember two things. The first one is the A U G, which is actually forming the start codon for the protein synthesis, and this A U G actually codes for methionine. So whenever a protein is formed, the first amino acid is methionine, which is coded by this triplet code A U G. so au is the starting codon okay similarly when the protein synthesis stops there are certain codons which actually are present where the protein synthesis stops so these are known as the stop codons the stop codons are known as uaa uag uga so this is, has some names of some scientists you can just look into the books and check it out by yourself so all the 20 amino acids are coded from with different uh, codons you can see rg9 and uc are actually having six codons similarly others have four some has three some have two some one like that okay so these are some codons which are actually coding different 20 amino acids so whenever a aug is formed protein synthesis takes place and it forms the amino acid methionine and whenever ua uga or uag is there the protein synthesis stops because these are the stop codons clear to all of you class What are codons? Yes, ma'am. The start codon is the stop codons. A U G and these three are stop codons. Okay. Again, this is the way the chart has been prepared in this way because you can write the first letter if it is U C A G. and second letter if it is u c a g and the third letter is u c a g u c a g u c a g and all that so you, this way you can form the combination the first letter is u u u and all second is again u and this thing u c a g then again here first letter is u the second letter is c and again u c a g and all that this way this chart has been in 64 amino acid combination you can find it out and here you can see which is actually forming so A U G is for the methionine, the start codon, and these three are the stop codons. Okay, the codons. Ah, uh, 
the codons actually the genetic codons are actually read with the help of a tRNA. So tRNA actually if you look into the structure of tRNA it's just like a clover leaf. The clover leaf model of the tRNA is shown over here which actually having a if you can see RNA as a 5 dash end to 3 dash end. So it is actually formed in a stem kind and kind of loop like structure forming a leaf like structure over here. So uh, you can see this is the stem if you can see the stems are actually within the RNA they are actually forming the bonds and then there are some loop like structure which is actually colored over here the orange and then this sky blue and this yellow this part is actually unpaired they are not pairing with each other okay so these are known as the t loop d loop then anticodal loop and then we have a amino acid attachment site so at this three days end prime the amino acid actually attaches okay and now what is actually doing rna trna actually moves across the mrna and looks for what are the codons are there. So in the mRNA, whatever the three letter base pairs come, suppose here it is GAG, the same anticodon will be present in the tRNA, the opposite ones. So the GC, UA and GC base pairing based on this, the anticodon will be present over here. And this amino, this tRNA will be having a amino acid over here. Okay, so we'll look into that again. Like here you can see this is my mRNA 5 days to 3 days prime whenever there is a AUG or the start codon here is present the tRNA actually brings the amino acid so for AUG the cone the amino acid is the what is the amino acid methionine so methionine will be bought so methionine will be bought by the tRNA and it will be having the corresponding anticodon which is UAC so UAC anticodon it will recognize over here and it will bring the amino acid mRNA sorry methionine and then what happens that the ribosomes the bigger unit and the smaller unit you have learned about it in your cell biology the larger subunit of ribosomal smaller subunit of, R, um, of uh, ribosomes they come across and this they are actually sit over this RNA and this initiation takes place the translation takes place with a method known as initiation so whenever AUG is there initiation of translation takes place the transition complex forms because this ribosome sits over here and tRNA brings the first amino acids to start the you know, translation and then one by one many tRNA brings the next next whatever the codon is there similar that that tRNA will bring that amino acid and so on so this tRNA will be bringing the amino acids and this amino acids will be joining together with each other and this tRNA will be removing. So many tRNAs are bringing one by one amino acids and this amino acids are actually linked together with the help of peptide bonds from this polypeptide chain and the ribosomes keeps moving. So this process is known as elongation where tRNA are actually bringing different amino acids one by one and adding to the polypeptide chain. And at end the termination takes place where what happens is that the whenever we are facing any stop codon UA or UAG or UGA at that time tRNA here it stops the translation and this polypeptide is this being dissociated and it released it is released this polypeptide chain that has been formed is released and also the ribosomes both the uh, subunits the large and small one then they just go away from this mRNA they dispass they dissociate so at the end this is the how the protein synthesis takes place with the protein chain is being formed so you can see over here another thing RRNAs are there and this these things are there large subunits small subunits so you know that the RNAs um, ribosome things are there so I'm not going to discuss thing yeah, again here. So this picture also showing A, B, C, D, E, F. The four pictures have been shown over here to give you a correct idea of how these things are happening. So look at here. This mRNA has AUG start codon. So the initiator tRNA is bringing the first amino acid of the polypeptide, which is the methionine. Now second, if it is GUG. The anticodon will be CAC and that TRN will be bringing the valine. You can see here 
this two uh, tRNAs are bringing two amino acids. Now these two amino acid will join together with the help of a peptide bond, and first uh, tRNA will just go away. Now the third tRNA will bring another amino acid that will also link with this. So methionine, valine, leucine, based on the codon that are present in the mRNA. And then again this tRNA will be removed and so on. One by one tRNA are bringing one by one amino acids based on whatever the codons are there present in the mRNA. Okay. So mRNA has codons based on which tRNAs are bringing the amino acids. Amino acids are getting linked together with the peptide bond and tRNA after the amino acids are being linked are leaving that place. And so on, one by one, tRNAs are bringing amino acids which are actually linked together to, with the help of peptide bonds to form a polypeptide chain. And this is how the protein synthesis takes place. Okay. And at the end, whenever we are getting any stop coder, this process stops and the ribosomes also dissociates uh, the ribosomal subunits from the mRNA. Actually, they have set on the mRNA, so they will remove. And at the end, we are getting a polypeptide chain or a protein chain. Clear class? So there is a very nice link where you can see how the protein synthesis takes place. I can share this in your MS Teams chat box. You all go through it because there is a beautiful animation, simply theory class. You must have, must have some doubts, but when you look into some videos which have good animations. So in YouTube, if you look, there are thousands of uh, videos. But I have selected some of them for like it becomes easy for you for that uh, for your study purpose. So I'll share this. You look into this and you can have an idea how protein synthesis takes place. What is the take home message? Now how RNA is translated into protein? The translation is an energy requiring process that converts the protein building information carried by an mRNA into a polypeptide. During this initiation, the mRNA joins in a, with an initiated tRNA and the two ribosomal subunits. During elongations, amino acids are delivered to the complex by the tRNAs in the order directed by successive mRNA codons. As they arrive, the ribosome joins each to end of the polypeptide chain. The termination now occurs when the ribosome encounters the stop codon in the mRNA. The mRNA and the polypeptide are released and the ribosome disassembles. Clear to all of you? Is it difficult protein synthesis? Any doubts regarding protein synthesis translation machinery? No. So summarizing these things. So anticodon is something, the set of three nucleotides in a tRNA, which are actually base pairing with the mRNA codon. Now what is a codon is? The codon is something in mRNA, we have a nucleotide base triplet that actually codes for an amino acid or a stop signal during translation. Genetic code, which is actually a set of 64 mRNA codons, each of which actually specifies an amino acid or a stop signal in the translation. Now, rRNA or ribosomal RNA is a type of RNA that actually becomes a part of the ribosomes. tRNA or the transfer RNA is actually a type of RNA which actually delivers amino acid to our ribosome during translation. Clear? With this, we are finishing the molecular biology module. If any one of you has any doubts, let me know so that we can discuss it in the class itself. Class, no, no doubts. You all are clear with molecular biology module. In our next class, I'll start with microbiology, which I probably will take on most probably on Saturday morning around 11 a.m. So we can discuss more about microbiology. Class, all good? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, okay, ma'am. Yeah, so since you are having an online exam in your NSEM, but I don't think it will be a um, MCQ type. So this, this time you have to be more prepared. OK, so CA1, CA2 was online. That was fine. But in CA, I mean, in the NSEM, it won't be like that. So we have to be more. OK. OK. 
okay then see you um, on stop the recording sorry also stop the recording i'll stop the recording okay sure